Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. Happy holidays from the Security Matters Hawaii episode. Uh, today, we've got Bill Bozeman on, on the line with us. He's remote. I'm, I'm bugging him during his vacation time. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna peer into the security industry from uh, I think Bill's probably probably one of the insiders. If if you don't know Bill, uh, he's all over the industry from end to end. Bill, thanks for uh, thanks for interrupting your holiday celebrations there and joining us for uh, for an episode today. Oh, glad glad to be Andrew. Look, I've got on my red uh, yeah. my red holiday shirt like like yours. Yeah, you're red. I'm red. I've got a red background. I don't know if you can see, but uh, this is so it will be a good looking episode. Hopefully, we can do something valuable here. Um, okay. I thought um, I thought we kind of do a year in the year in review. So if we, you know, if we look back to early in the year, uh, tech had a new home. You know, we started off there. Are there shows earlier? It seems like we that sort of leads off the year for me. I don't know. Are there other things that go on? We have BLC, I guess, going on early and the Great Conversation. So what, you know, if, what yeah. when when you when the year started, sort of what what did you see churning out there that you know uh, maybe set the tone for the year? Well, I think the economy was good, and uh, ah. despite what's going on in the stock market, I, I think the economy is still you know, pretty solid, although I, I attended the financial meetings um, uh, in New York last week, and uh, you know, they, there wasn't quite as much optimism going forward mm -hmm. as I saw at that same meeting last year, Andrew. So, no, we had the economy going for us, um, but you're right, tech is the first larger show over a thousand um, of, of the year in, in 2019 in March. Yeah, so and so last year it seemed like when we went to um, great conversation, they there were finally um, you know some some a little more input from the integrator community. I think there's been or we've seen a lot of aggregate M and A merger and acquisition sort of activity, and um, I, you know I think there was finally a concern uh, from some of the integrators being voiced about our how prepared are we uh, for these larger enterprise customers that are going through the digital transformation, you know, what, what's our integrator community doing? What are our manufacturers doing? Um, what's, your, what's your take on that conversation? Well, I mean, the M&A is, the, the M&A continues to be hot. I think as the interest rates raise, if they continue to raise a race, things will slow down a bit. Hmm. I mean, I'm not an economist, but that's pretty much common sense. Uh, but I mean, last year, I mean, 2018 was extremely active, right? Both on the vendor side, um, as well as on the integrator side. You know, I can't really say that that's a good thing, nor can I say it's a bad thing. Uh, it's just something that we deal with. So, and sometimes it ends up being, I would think, probably good for the end user of the products. In other cases, maybe not so good. You know, there are some incredibly good uh, independent physical security integrators, Andrew, mm -hmm. very, very good. I mean, in some cases, they can do miraculous things that even the large giant uh, roll-up conglomeration experts can't do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, so, but I mean, go ahead. that isn't going to stop things. It's going to keep going on as long as that money's available. Mm -hmm. Is the um, I know we we did some we were talking a little bit about some of that that valuation practice that goes in to um, that, you know, what what makes those integrators valuable to buy? I know sometimes it's just geography. You know, the big guy doesn't have someone in Canada, so yeah. he buys someone in Canada, whatever it may be. But other times it's uh, the, the true value of that company or some intellectual property that that company has. Um, do you do you see the smaller guys gearing up to be sold? Is that a popular topic of conversation? I mean, I we we don't view it that way out here where we're at, but I don't know the I don't know the conversation on the mainland. You might say on these smaller, you know, ten million and under kind of companies. You know, are their owners content to just kind of keep cruising along? Well, um, you know, ten million and under is, is tough. Uh, you know, the due diligence that goes into these deals uh, is significant, even for even for the smaller ones. So the, you know, the cost ratio of evaluating a company it makes it a lot easier if they're ten million and up. Having said that, they are strategic buyers. Um, you know, many years ago when I sold my company, that was to a strategic buyer, and I was very strong in one vertical, and they really wanted to be in that vertical. So you've got your strategic buyers, you have your financial buyers right now, they're both active. Mm. Um, but you know, the, the, the really small integrator, the two, three, two, three million dollar integrator, it's a tough road to hoe unless you have a strategic buyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's in. But the multiples, 
the multiples are fairly good right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for the for the integrators that have a, a respectable, you know, EBITDA, a yeah. five, six, seven, eight percent EBITDA, then the multiples are are, are quite solid. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It it seems like most of you know most integrators I know are obviously PSA Tech members, and they it seems that they love the industry so much. They there's no one's pushing to sell. Like in other words, it's that what else would they go do? So you might as well work for yourself. Um, what, you know the uh, I know you and I've pushed long and hard about uh, adopting some cyber practices, and I know we're now talking about th those get delivered in sort of a managed services type of package. Do you do you do you think we're going to start to see more bite off on that, or what's your what's your what's your feel there? Because well, let's start with from the beginning of last year to the end of, or from the beginning of eighteen to the end of eighteen. What do you how do you, how much influence do you think we had? Let's let's just kind of go with that that route. On the on the cyber side, you're referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I mean it's been an amazing it, it, you know in all the decades that I've spent in this business, almost almost four decades now. I, I think I see the, the fastest change I've ever seen for a specific uh, discipline. Mm. Um, I mean, uh, you and I were on the early bandwagon, and we we, we just didn't have much traction. Possibly we were early or early to the race. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, right now everyone takes it very seriously. I think there's uh, confusion mm -hmm. on the part of the integrators, and quite frankly, confusion on the part of some of the manufacturers. Although they have really stepped it up in this last 12 months. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I were both there when both the integrators and the manufacturing, you know, slash vendor community really didn't express a whole lot of enthusiasm uh, for getting involved and doing what we felt was the right thing to do, you know, regarding cybersecurity. Yeah. I don't, we, we're really not getting that pushback now. Now we're getting a little bit more, oh gosh, what do I do? How do I do it? Mm -hmm. Other than immediately, when do I do it? Mm. So that's been very rapidly, um, you know, accepted in this last 12 months. I think everyone knows they need to step it up. It's just how do you step it up? Mm. Yeah, and so I'm I'm trying to think. When was that big cyber congress? Was that in 16 or 17? When we when that was the first? I think that was your vision to put that together. Wait, was that in 16? That was yes. That was in 2016. Yeah. So and. Um, <laughs> And we really had a lot of people, <laughs> you know, walk away from there yeah. um, with concern, but maybe maybe a little confused. So, you know, that's why the cybersecurity event uh, that came the year after that was, uh, I think, much more in line with the needs of, of our community. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so when, you, when you're talking today, so I, I still, you know, the integrators that I speak to, are, I think they're in that mode that you said how, do you think that they're um, operationally that their owners are ready to give spend money on on some of these higher level certifications and and the understanding of their people because it's um a bit of a of a spend you know that they haven't had to absorb. Uh, do you do you get that feeling from our owner community? You know, I get I get mixed not mixed signals but mixed opinions on this. Hmm. I think. First of all, I'm pleased to say because simply because, you know, people like you, I mean, being the chairman of our cybersecurity committee, I mean, you have been, you know, fabulous getting this message out to the integrator community and, and to the vendor community as well. I don't believe there are any PSA integrators that are totally clueless and don't get it. Zero. And that's, I feel very, very good about that. And once again, I compliment you and, the, and our cybersecurity committee for accomplishing a lot there. However, I do not see the majority of the PSA integrators, which I think, you know, you and I would agree are pretty much the cream of the crop in the physical security world mm -hmm. with the best products and the best service, the highest technology capability. Mm -hmm. However, um, most are focused on protecting themselves, you know, from, from, from getting cybersecurity um, insurance mm -hmm. to learning the base on how to protect themselves to partnering with companies who can protect their own company. Yeah. So some see this, that everyone sees the threat. Now the opportunity, the opportunity, a smaller percentage see, Andrew. Hmm. And I think that's going to change. I mean, the, the, some of the MSSP products that we're, that we're bringing to the forefront will allow the physical security integrator to participate in the opportunity part, in the profitability. Mm -hmm. uh, however, as of today, I would say that is the majority. But the good news is we have everyone is concerned and stepping up to the plate, protecting themselves, et cetera. But not everyone is saying, 
I think I might be reselling these cybersecurity services mm -hmm. that PSA is bringing to people. Most will take a wait and see um, attitude. Mm -hmm. I would say that you and Christine, quite frankly, are somewhat of an exception to, to the current rule. Mm -hmm. The um, it's it that that's promising because I I recall people in in sixteen at our event. People that I respected quite a bit telling me that cybersecurity was a fad. You know, and I was like, I don't think this one's a fad. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I think everybody realizes the, the everybody realizes the the the, the threat. Yeah. No one is is saying it's not me. No one is saying it's not my problem. Uh, everyone is saying it's a huge problem, and we are part of this. We are we can be part of the problem, and we also can be part of the solution. That's the group that sees the opportunity. Not right. only potentially could they be part of the problem, but potentially they can be part of the solution. And therein lies an incredible opportunity for the physical security integrator. And by the way, this just isn't Bill Bozeman's opinion. I mean, this is opinion of cybersecurity experts that we've had done lengthy due diligence with that dug in and understand the capabilities of a traditional physical security um, you know, integrator. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a partnership, though. Yeah. It's also different, Andrew, as you know, it's a different type of partnership that an integrator would have, say, with an enterprise access control product mm -hmm. or an enterprise VMS. It is a different type of a partnership. It's actually a closer partnership. Yeah, and it's it's interesting. I've, I've talked with folks that are trying to figure out how to bite off all of that, that IT work, you know, absorb the workstations and all the endpoints and others more like myself are really interested in just protecting the equipment that we've dropped in on a network. But then you've got these sort of shared responsibilities in a network. Managing that's a little more difficult perhaps. So, you know, I think it's it's going to be fun to watch. I'm glad I'm glad that, you know, you're seeing more people stepping up and wanting to play um, from our industry. I think it's only going to help. You know, there's there's a lot of other industries out there. The pro AV industry is going to have to come aboard. They have the same pro problems, and they're not as quickly identified with security risk as, as security folks are. You know, we sort of live in that environment. Um, I saw a really interesting article on on the adoption of, of a more of a risk-based risk -based approach for assessing the supply chain itself, of which, you know, our, our integrator community is a part of that supply chain. So as they start to vet our organizations out and we get some of those results back, I think we're going to start to see from from the Homeland Security perspective, you know, how, how do we really grade out, you know, and, and then some of these, we'll have some real numbers to put to the sentiment and the feelings that you and I have, you know, and we'll find out who's really doing things and who's talking about it. And, you know, maybe it's the big guys, you know, um, maybe it's the little guys, hard to say. Um, is... Um, you know, I know uh, ADT bought a big uh, a big uh, cyber company that they sort of rolled out as well. Do you have much visibility on how that's going? Uh, do you know what, what they're doing with that? If I'm not mistaken, Andrew, I think they bought two. Um, oh. And I believe I believe that they're well. Of course, it's, it's ADT, right? That is the you know what's the cliche? They are the 800 pound gorilla. Yeah. Uh, I believe that they're focusing on the residential market and the smart home market. Mm that will allow them to offer this as part of their monitoring services, you know, with, their, with the verb alarm and the fire alarm and the smart sure. home and the controlling of the thermostats and also protecting your home. And then possibly some um, SMB business and small, medium-sized business. I don't see them as being an enterprise player, but, um, you know, just like the PSA integrators have this amazing customer base, um, look at ADT's residential base. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's the largest in the world. So they have they have a built-in customer base. Um, the customers, the residential customers, have now are realizing that they are at risk. So there's a perceived need there. So I think ADT's program makes a heck of a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah, hopefully we'll that we'll see that adoption continue to spread awareness too. Maybe take it from the home back to the business. Tay, we're gonna cut to break, pay some. We're gonna pay some bills. We'll be back in just about one minute with Bill Bozeman. Hang on. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. 
We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to Security Matters Hawaii. We're talking with Bill Bozeman, president and CEO of PSA Security, and we're just trying to revisit 18 and some of the some of those trends and some of the things that we're pushing on our industry, things that uh, things that were important. Um, Bill, we were discussing that that push from cyber and uh, how that you know sort of started to wake. I think our integrators up definitely woke our manufacturers up finally, and uh, we, you know we want to get into maybe how those services get delivered, which is really typically more of a managed services type of platform. And I know you've got a, 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 a vision for what our, how our guys can get from sort of break fix to managed services. So give me your take on the, the implementation of that. What, uh, what, are you, what are we gonna try to do to lead the industry from a PSA position? Well, Andres, we reported to uh, the board and the bank uh, as we dig into this and our program by the way gets rolled out we do a soft rollout in january ah. with a hard deep dive rollout at psa tech in in march in okay. denver so and it, you know it isn't just cybersecurity. Cybersecurity security right. is, is is one part here i mean we have video surveillance um, access control naturally which are our core competencies and and cyber security so all of them delivered in a managed services um, environment so we have been delivering um, enterprise uh, and, and small and medium-sized business um, standalone systems um, for quite some time, and of course now they're on the network. But still, the it's a different business model, Andrew. And we, I feel, um, and it isn't just Bill, uh, but a lot of people who study the industry feel that the industry is moving in a direction. It's a freight train and it isn't going to stop. Yeah. Statistically, here's what we are estimating for for our group. Of, of, of systems integrators. Of approximately 200 of the 300 integrators that PSA supports are physical security integrators, with the other 100 being pro AV. So we feel that we are suggesting that they slowly migrate to a managed services business model, which will improve their cash flow, will improve their finances, and absolutely improve, dramatically improve the exit valuation and their borrowing capability. We're suggesting that they migrate 20% of their business in 18 to 24 months. So that's 24, 20% of their revenue run rate over an 18 to 24 month period. We're not suggesting that they abandon their traditional model. Absolutely not. We're suggesting that they slowly migrate into a managed services business model. 30% is better than 20, 50% is better than 20. And we have statistics from the financial community saying that that is a very, very good move. Mm. In addition, Andrew, the, as, as the purchasers become younger, it is a model that they're more comfortable with. Um, it, it, makes, you know, it makes sense, the, the whole CapEx equation. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, and that's where things are going. The vendor community, just like with, excuse me, just like with cybersecurity, has been somewhat slow um, to provide the products, but as we both know, the products are there now. Mm -hmm. The bandwidth is also there now. Mm -hmm. So there really isn't a good reason not to take a very close look at models like this. You're getting customer demand. You're improving your cash flow. You're improving the finances of your company, including the exit valuation. So it's really something we're real pleased about. We originally will go to market. Uh, right now we have 14 partners uh, okay. that will allow our integrators to to you know, adapt to this model, both in cybersecurity, video surveillance, and access control. Okay, yeah, it's good. So we've and we've been doing that ourselves, which is and to great success. I mean, the the model works really, really well. I the I just have other customers who you know, like so our DoD customers talk about 
cloud, but they're not ready to consume security that way yeah. yet. But, you know, our commercial base, if, if I could move it all to that, that direction, I would definitely be doing that. You know, that's a, I think it's a great, it's a great time. Um, I, uh, I'm glad that there's a push. So talk a little bit about the training. I know that um, uh, I've got a book that I've got to get read before tech uh, about transforming your business. I think that came uh, maybe to, to Christine from the board. But um, what kind of uh, uh, education uh, are you going to try to get out there for our community, uh, in particular our PSA, you know, member community, owner member community? Well, you know, that's part of the challenge, and that's what we've been working so so hard on. It, it's not, uh, it is a different model. Um, I would say that the, 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 the technology really isn't the challenge. The yeah. challenge is that it's a different type of a sales cycle. Um, there's a different compensation program for the sales representatives. Mm -hmm. Um, the cash flow model um, is, is very different. How you recognize the revenue mm -hmm. is different. Um, the attitude that the bank is going to have towards this type of an operation versus a traditional uh, contractor type operation is different. Mm -hmm. So these are all these are all areas that we'll be educating our, our wow. integrators about. You know, from compensation to the different type of contract you need to use, different type of sales technique. Uh, possibly uh, even different salespeople from the traditional enterprise um, salespeople. So it's a full package. Um, if you're missing one piece, that can slow up the entire process. So it is a full package, and we're, we're, we're excited about rolling it out. Yeah, I think it, there's a half-day or an all-day session or something like that I'm in, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, do you, uh, did, you, did you see good adoption? Has that, do you know about the sign-ups yet for that event? Has, did a lot of people jump in already? I, I don't know how it... Um... I don't know if you hear that those metrics back already. We it's, just it's announced. Early, it's, yeah, it's early in the registration game. But here's what I can tell you: the original room that was set aside in Denver for this, I, I went back to the, the team in Denver who was, you know, coordinating the logistics, and I said, "This, this, you need, it needs to be a bigger room because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm very confident the room will be filled up. You know, it's it's the day that the show. Um, it's, Actually, it's the, the the day before the show opens officially, so oh. it's, it's the night of the open, it's the day of the open. So, yeah. I'm expecting, um, you know, several hundred because I think even the integrators, and this is what we're preaching, even if you're not interested in making these changes, you need to understand why others are. So you understand what the competition is doing, not just what you're missing, but what you have to deal with. Yeah. When, you're, when, when your competitor comes to that end user with a completely different model, and there may be very little, almost nothing up front, and you're going in with a six-figure upfront requirement. Yep. You have to understand. You have to understand these these, these financial dynamics, uh, so you you can stay afloat. Yeah, that's a. I I think it's so critical to always understand that that landscape is changing all around every integrator. So whether you want to play or not, you better understand who's playing in that realm. Good good point. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yes. So out, outside of managed services, as we get into 19, I mean, we'll have that, that good focus early at tech. We're going to have Cyber Secured Forum down in Dallas in July. What else do you think we should expect? You did mention, you know, the economy, you know, with interest rates rising, things could be changing. I know we usually get our economic update there from uh, in, our friends at NSCA when we go to uh, BLC. Um, what, what, what's on your horizon? I know you talk in those, some of those financial circles. What, uh, what do you see for 2019? Well, like, like I said, the, the meeting I just attended, and I'll be attending another um, in, in February uh, in, in Florida, it's just, I would say, more cautiously optimistic, Andrew, okay. than, than overtly, you know, optimistic. And, and, of course, you can see that with, you know, I mean, right now, the, the government shutdown, which we're currently experiencing as of today, let's hope that this is resolved and doesn't drag on, you know, into 2019. The trade war comes up. Andrew, I mean, it's impacted our organization because yeah. we, you know, our, our numbers have been reduced with some of the Chinese products that, that we represent. Mm -hmm. So you've got the trade war, you've got the interest rates rising. So you have this uncertainty, you know, that I think may have some people uh, inclined just to put the foot on the brake and pause things. And, and that's why I believe that there's some concern. I think once we get one or two of these resolved, uh, that things will loosen back up because overall, I mean, the numbers for most companies are, are looking fairly good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like our... I'm not sure it justifies, 
I'm not sure it justifies. I mean, some of these companies losing, you know, 10, 20, 30 percent of their value. Some of the tech companies, um, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not an analyst. I'm not a financial analyst. Sure. But I think overall, we're the economy's not that bad. Yeah, and I think for our industry, there's a we have a massive backlog, and I know a lot of the integrators do. So you know, that's a that's a it, it's an important point that. We, we've always been a little bit resilient as an industry. You know, when the economy yeah. goes bad, crime goes up, and security's busy, and when it there's is. money to spend. I mean, it's an interesting, interesting industry from that perspective. I hear people say, and I don't necessarily agree with this, Andrew. I hear people say that the security industry is recession-proof. Yeah. It's not recession-proof, because yeah. we're seeing that in the 80s, right? We saw that some even in the 70s. But I do believe it's recession-resistant as compared to, say, let me pick something. Retail. Luxury vehicles. Yeah. Luxury vehicles. Jewelry. Uh, fancy uh, cruises to Europe. Ah. Um, but security security has become so important. I mean, I, I this is, you know, I, I was quoted this saying this, you know, a long time ago, and it, it really is true, and it's become more relevant and more accurate statement now. But, I mean, we have both been in this business a long time, and we really have gone from the outhouse to the penthouse. <laughs> I mean, you just don't, you just don't build a facility. Um, I would say in the world without taking security into consideration. Yeah. I mean, when I got in this business, we were security was an afterthought. Wow. It is no longer an afterthought. Yeah. Um, and, and believe me, it is up to the. I mean, security is is it is in the C-suite. It has the attention of the C-suite. It has the attention of the legal team. Uh, it's a very big deal, and I don't see any change with this. So, um, you know, sometimes adversity, and as you mentioned, crime, terrorism, I mean, things that are just have a negative feel to them, they are, in fact, you know, in, in some cases, I mean, you just can't get around this. They're drivers for our business. Yeah. Well, we are um, fortunate that we're here to help. I hope our, our clients Feel that they're fortunate to know us and, and know of the efforts that PSA puts out and the rest of our integrator community, our manufacturers, all of our friends out there. Um, Bill, I really appreciate you taking taking some time during your holidays to speak with us today. And um, join me next week. I'm going to have some folks in here from the IEEE. We're going to talk about their role in all this technology. And uh, you guys stay safe out there. Aloha. <laughs>